start with the name Big O B. What does that mean? And why did you choose Big O B for your company name? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a lot of interviews. This is the first time I'm being asked this in the public space, but uh, Big O B means big heart, right? Um, uh, OB, unofficially, my name is Obi Law, uh, my ground. Hello, welcome to Story with Linda. Today, I am with the incredible Kelechi Ike, who is a Nigerian-American software engineer, filmmaker with many years of experience in the world of technology. Despite his astute technical background, Kelechi has always had a deep interest for storytelling and the creative arts. In the year 2011, he decided to dabble into the filmmaking under Big O B Productions. And since then, he has written, directed, produced, and starred in many award-winning films that can be found in a lot of prestigious universities around the world and in the United States. Welcome, Kelechi. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Dr. Linda. It's good, good to, to be on your you. platform. Yes, it's good to yes. see you. We, sh we should be honest with our audience that you and I share a law for Madison, Wisconsin, USA. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's that's a part of our roots is uh, Madison, Wisconsin. We've come a long way. Yes. Was that the first place you came to when you came to the U.S.? No, actually, I came to Texas. Um, ah. I was here, then moved there. I worked uh, with the University of Wisconsin for about four years and then moved back down. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with the cold. Oh. But, you know, uh, Madison is Madison, beautiful place. Beautiful. And congratulations to you uh, with the high post you have there as the deputy mayor. Uh, <laughs> Thank I you. was so um, excited, you know, to, to get that news uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, you're doing a wonderful job over there as well, holding it down. Thank you. Kelechi just told you guys my secret. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I have questions for, for, for you, but I wanted to actually start with the name Big O B. What does that mean? And why did you choose Big O B for your company name? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a lot of interviews. This is the first time I'm being asked this in the public space, but uh, Big O B means big heart. Right. Um, uh, OB, unofficially, my name is Obi Law. Uh, my grandmother named me. And um, when it came to film production as creative, we had to find something right. you know, different. Uh, so mm -hmm. I coined, uh, well, well uh, given my philanth, how do I put it? Um, I don't want to say philanthropic, uh, this thing, uh, you know, but g given the type of work that I do with the community and, you know, so uh, it, it really comes with a big heart. Yeah. And, and uh, that's really where the big OB now comes from is uh, a big heart productions in a way, but mm -hmm. to make it in, in interesting, you twist it with the Igbo language, uh, Obi meaning heart in Igbo language. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Eastern part of Nigeria. Okay. And um, uh, that's where, you know, the play of words, Big Obi mm -hmm. comes from, yeah. Thank you. I didn't know Obi means big heart. See, this is why I love my podcast. No, Obi means heart. Then big Obi means big heart. Big heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Obina. What does Obina? I have a friend who's called Obina. Obina is uh, the father's heart. The father. Ah, I'm learning yeah. today. Yeah, ah. so, After this uh, podcast, I'll be fluent in Igbo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you for explaining that, Kalechi. I'll go into our first question. Um when I read your bio, you know, it says you decided to jump into filmmaking in 2011. Um, and I actually first met you in 2012 when you came yeah. to screen uh, Lost in Abroad um, in Madison, Wisconsin. And it, it was a big deal. Everybody was so excited. The, the, the African Women Association dressed up and 
went to your thing. So it's been 11 years now. And I'm just curious um, how the journey of going into filmmaking has been for you. It has been great, uh, honestly. You know, uh, filmmakers, you know, get into it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, some is to gain fame. Uh, mm -hmm. Some is to uh, make money, uh, which in every profession we want to do that and, you know, for livelihood. But no, none of those inspired my getting into filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having uh, a solid profession already in software engineering. So mm -hmm. I was more interested in raising awareness uh educating and addressing issues in the African communities. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the measurement of success for everyone varies. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the reasons that I dabbled into filmmaking, by God's grace, I've achieved those um uh, you know goals mm -hmm. and still are attaining uh, uh, you know working hard to uh, do more. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's 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 been it's been quite a, an interesting journey uh, for the type of stories that I tell. Even from the titles alone, uh, people immediately gravitate towards uh, my mm -hmm. films. Uh, you know, so and as you uh, mentioned, a, a lot of these uh, big schools you know have also grabbed interest in, in my style of storytelling and the topics that I choose to address uh, that's why you find uh, uh, my films at uh, you know institutions like Harvard Yale Stanford Wisconsin mm -hmm. Northwestern uh, you name it a lot of yeah. universities are uh, using my films for um, African and immigration studies. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I like telling our stories. Yeah. Uh, it's really a calling uh, mm -hmm. because when, when you, the, the struggle really in, in filmmaking, when you are doing it and, uh, and you're not making millions out of it, you're not making you know, the type of money people think you're, you're making out of it and you keep pushing. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to to do what uh, some of us do, whether money comes out of it or not. Mm. So, so you've said several times, uh, you mentioned several times the, the topics that you chose to delve into, and that's why people are interested in your films. What are those uh, topics that first pushed you to go into filmmaking and uh, or issues that made you want to go into filmmaking? What are the issues that you, you focus on? Well, you look at uh, Lost and Abroad, um you know the the whole motivation there really was personal uh, mm -hmm. because i came to the united states at the age of 18 mm -hmm. um for school you know mm -hmm. after the first degree i went on to graduate school and attend so the the, the goal of coming to school uh, or to the united states is to is to come here, get education, and go back home mm -hmm. uh, to develop home, work, and do whatever we need to do uh, with the education and experiences acquired from here. Mm -hmm. But um, that wasn't the case. I remember graduating, even undergrad, and I called my parents, and I said, Dad, OK, I've graduated. It's time to come home. It's like coming home to, to do what? <laughs> I say, I thought, I mean, I thought that was really that was the plan. thing. Yeah, you know, because he did the same thing. He 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 studied here and you know, and he came back home, you know. Okay. Uh yeah. And he he stayed there. Um so I wanted to follow that yeah. footstep, you know. And he so and I looked at me as <laughs> <laughs> aren't you reading the news <laughs> everybody is trying to get away from here and you're trying to come back what is wrong with you <laughs> oh goodness so as far back as then 
this was in the 90s uh, mm -hmm. when Nigeria was, of course, under uh, military dictatorship. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he, he just saw it as a, a useful exuberance, really, mm -hmm. uh, than anything. It wasn't, at that time, it wasn't practical at, at all. He wanted me home, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not at the way things were going. Uh, and his hope is, okay, you know, just wait study some more when things get better uh, you'll come back and you know do what you need to do for your country and people mm -hmm. uh, it never really got better if you look mm -hmm. at the history of how things are going in nigeria in africa as a whole in africa, um yeah. yeah things keep you know seem yeah. to be getting worse and worse and worse but um so at a point you know when i look back you see this, um, you know, teenager coming to America mm -hmm. and to get education and uh, wanting to go back. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then you find yourself at, at, at that time when I wrote this film, I was, I, I had been in the States for almost 20 years mm -hmm. and, and two decades it became scary, really, you know. Uh, I think maybe 18 years to be exact at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was really scary for me. It, it, I, w I wake up sweating. And, and, and this is me personally, because it, it, the, what I was going, the um, trauma that I was going through, uh, it's not come on, on every immigrant, I must mm -hmm. say, you know, a lot of people enjoy being here and grateful to be here. I am, you know, for the opportunity this country has provided for, for me, you and everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to overstay my welcome, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that has just been itching to go back and do something for my country and for my people. Yeah. But uh, the longer that time took, and, and, I'm still here, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, 12 years ago when I wrote The Lost in Abroad, it was really from personal expression, really. Wow. And, 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 uh, and uh, yeah, cause I'm the one that felt like, oh goodness, I didn't think I was gonna be in America this long, I'm lost in abroad. Mm. Yeah, y you know, so. Mm -hmm. And then I looked around, I saw some Nigerians, you know, we call uncles, some Africans, we call mm -hmm. them, everybody is an uncle, right? <laughs> so I saw uncle some auntie. uncles and aunties uh, here uh, when I first came to the States. And they, they always expressed the same concern about going back. Yeah. And almost 20 years later, and I look, they are older and they are still here. Yeah. Nobody is going back. Mm -hmm. So I knew that that expression, uh, I was speaking for them mm -hmm. as well. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was a mutual, it, it, everybody was feeling the same way, but yeah. I think um, I finally spoke out. Mm. Yeah, about yeah. it. And that's why it was received like wildfire. Yeah. Um, till up till last week, mm -hmm. uh, I'm still being pushed to do a sequel to Lost and Abroad mm -hmm. because it, it's it's a uh, it it's feels an like endless, a trap sometimes. Yeah, it, it, it's um, what do you call it? It's just uh, one of those perpetual topics that yeah. uh, it, it's timeless, it's right? Timeless. It's kind of like Bob Marley music. Yeah, uh, it, it's timeless. They they they. they uh, issue of immigration and you know Africans coming here and not going back mm -hmm. applies you know yeah. and not just Africans I mean yeah. every, you know, immigration everybody uh, you know uh, non-Africans do it too mm -hmm. but we face that challenge of coming here uh, you know um, getting education getting opportunities in this beautiful country so, and it, it takes a different uh, uh, level of push and 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 calling mm. to actually want to go back home 
to do anything because you look around as uh, for the length of this interview there will no there is no power failure <laughs> you know <laughs> no nepa cut <laughs> no nepa cut no you know if you drove to the studio uh, you know it's a smooth drive yeah. and uh no uh, bad roads it, it, so yeah. you find out that uh you know as humans nobody wants to stress for the rest of their lives yeah. and you know uh, and that's one thing i i see you know across the board among africans if if home was uh, just give us electricity and good roads and maybe walk in hospitals mm -hmm. a lot of us would not be here you know, you know so and that's not too much to ask for it's no. just you know um the uh, leadership being stared by maybe the wrong people mm. uh or the wrong subordinates uh, mm. because yeah uh yes. it, it, yeah sometimes point, you have good leaders but not the right yes leaders. yes <laughs> you, you look at it, it boils that everybody looks at the president but then the, the, the president is not gonna micromanage everything everybody. right yeah yeah so um uh, you can have a, a good leadership and you don't have good subordinates that are working under you and you know your record Absolutely. will suffer as, as well so mm. that that's the influx of uh, uh, uh africans uh trying to leave uh, africa oh. the continent into foreign countries where um uh, it seems like it's already uh, made, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, but you find out that it's almost like a modern day slavery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the difference being we are no longer coming through ship yeah. uh, and then now we are coming voluntarily instead of being forced. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we are still not coming here just to enjoy uh, yeah. the ready-made we are still working hard <laughs> still working it, 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 to know. sustain it <laughs> yes so uh, but we want to take that hard work we want to take these ideas back home yeah. uh, and that's some of uh, what my recent writings too uh is about that's yeah. great thank you so much and and in that story of uh you know um going back home and giving back to the folks back home you actually launch um, Root Flakes, uh, mm -hmm. which I've, I had seen, and but you know I hadn't paid too much attention to. But I recently subscribed, so I'm looking Good. forward to watching some of the movies on there. Uh, but I I wanted you to touch on if if there's anything that has surprised you in the process of collecting films um, from other filmmakers on the continent, or has it been what you expected? Has anything surprised you in that process? Um, well, the, the surprise really is, is the fact that you have so many great filmmakers that are unknown mm. in Africa. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, you hear about certain names out there and, you know, of course, everything is about, uh, marketing and packaging we say now uh, so some of the greatest filmmakers in africa are not known mm. yeah maybe they don't have the marketing power or they don't have the finances the funding mm -hmm. uh, so we get a lot of films on rootflix unknown names mm -hmm. you know doing very thorough creative work mm -hmm. that you know, some of the people getting uh, millions of dollars to do film can't even tell such stories. Mm. Yeah, so uh, what the difference is uh, with uh, some of the big money they get to make films, they're using high-end cameras. So you get pretty picture poor story, mm -hmm. but, you know, there are a lot of people doing um, great stories and maybe with you know, yes, had just high yes. definition uh, cameras, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, and for the efforts that I'm making to push our narratives and, and tell our stories ourselves, mm -hmm. it, it becomes, the, the story itself becomes more important mm. than, you know, the, the, uh, 
uh, uh, 8K camera, you know, while we are still barely consuming 4K. So um, it's kind of like the Blair Witch Project, right? Mm -hmm. You know, shot with just basic camera, but then grossed probably the highest grossing horror film ever, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it gave people what they wanted, you know, to see or the interest of, of what they wanted. So there's a lot of stories uh, to come out of Africa yeah. and the, the filmmakers are really still on a make-do basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, but you see the quality, uh, they're just super, mm -hmm. but it, it could be much higher if they had the funding Absolutely. Uh, but um, that's the that's where Rootflix comes in, you know, is to capture these stories, capture these filmmakers, encourage them. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, with uh, people like yourself subscribing now, when we grow the subscriptions, we want to through their now fund their projects mm -hmm. uh, to make. Uh, even better uh, quality film. This, they already have the stories. You know, we have the stories uh, across Africa. Uh, and uh, if you notice, I don't pay uh, any uh, preference to any particular country. I, I go out for good story, uh, great stories, you know, and uh, uh, that's what uh, Rootflix is about, mm. you know, pushing our narrative um, and, uh, behold our roots mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so when you look at root flicks were also um uh, you 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 look at uh our you know distribution wise um whatever you see out there we don't control mm. yeah so you might want to tell a story an honest story about um you know slavery for example mm -hmm. or apartheid for example mm -hmm. or before you make it to certain channels they've cut out some things you know yeah. to to make it appealing to everybody right? mm -hmm. yeah uh, so if you want an honest story where where we are not cutting out facts mm -hmm. that's what we want to capture on good flicks honest undiluted and, and as you follow some of the films uh and and in uh, as we progress african storytelling doesn't have profanity per se we we, 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 we are not uh, a lot of films you see there no uh, very clean they are mm -hmm. they are kids friendly Mm -hmm. uh, we are really interested in telling the, the story. A, a lot of drama is there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, some violence are going to be there because mm -hmm. when, when you tell honest African stories, uh, you know, a lot of uh, violence have happened uh, back home mm -hmm. uh, from the kidnapping to the coups yeah. to everything, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have, you know, um beautiful success uh stories there uh, as well mm -hmm. so we want to capture our roots we, we want to capture our reality mm -hmm. you know um if i'm looking for a story told in new york mm -hmm. i'll go to new york and tell a story i don't i don't I don't want to uh, pursue a, a story told in Nairobi mm -hmm. and they paint it as though it's being told in London. No, right. just get, let's get real. How mm -hmm. does an average uh, teenager or an average kid in Nairobi live? Let's, mm -hmm. let's cut out the aesthetics trying to be Hollywood. Yeah. We, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to capture. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you look at, um, um, and we have so many stories. You, you, you look at uh, uh, Lupita's film, um, uh, Queen of Catway, for example, mm, that yes. she did in 
yeah. in, in Uganda. You, you, you look at the you look at the raw picture. You, 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 you're looking at how beautiful, even in that ghetto, you see how beautiful it is. Yeah. That's that's our story. That we want to keep it real, yeah. you know, uh, and we want to show something great coming out of those environments, mm. you, you know, and then we want to do something to improve those environments. But if we run away from those environments and keep showing these uh, uh, skyscrapers that uh, colonial masters built for us in the 60s, we are lying to ourselves, you know, it's it's okay. We, we, I mean, uh, Africa is, is growing, it's evolving right. where we have beautiful buildings over there, you know, I must say, yes. uh, but you know, is how many people are living like yes. you know, some of the things we are trying to project, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, we want to keep it real. We want to behold our roots. I love that. And, and, and to be honest, even though technically you're my distant friend, I didn't sign up just because you're my friend. I signed up because um, there are actually unique features on there that I would not find anywhere else. Um, yes. For example, there are lots of Cameroonian films. We see the trailers all the time, but we never yeah. ever see the full movie. Um, so I'm very, very um, interested in, in, in those stories that the big platforms will not carry. Um, right. Something you mentioned takes me into my next question. I noticed that in your approach, you have been very intentional about going to various parts of Africa, because I think you know, just being in West Africa, you could have a lot of, just being just in Nigeria, you could have so many stories to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and then not just, uh, you know, and then West Africa, there are a lot of stories to tell, but you're very intentional about going to East and South. And I was just curious, what brought about that thinking to go to the East, to East Africa, Southern Africa, because you, you could tell a hundred and thousand stories just in West Africa, but I appreciate right. the fact that you went all over. What brought that thinking on? One Africa, um, you know, it, it, what what one thing that has plagued Africa as a whole is um, tribalism, right? Mm -hmm. So you go through tribalism within a country, mm -hmm. for example, and then out of that country, um, you now go through nationalism where um, Cameroonians think they are better off than Nigerians and Nigerians think they are better than Cameroon. So there's this competition, you know, between Africans. Mm -hmm. And it's a waste of time in my view, our opinion. Because, and that's, that's that uh, uh, colonial mentality that was instilled in, in the continent. Conquer. Yeah. You know, so it, it takes a level of uh, discipline to overcome that or wanting to overcome that. Mm -hmm. um, when you see me with Cameroonians, you will think I'm Cameroonian. You will, mm -hmm. When I go to uh, Tanzania or Rwanda, you think I'm from there. I, I have no limit. I have no boundary. Nothing ties me down, mm -hmm. um, you know, to make me feel any different from an Ethiopian or a South African mm -hmm. or, a, you know. So it takes a level of effort, an individual effort uh, to, to have that uh, um, emancipation uh, of mental slavery, really, as Bob Mali called uh, mm -hmm. advised. Yeah, so a, a lot of people, even, even in Cameroon, for example, I see what some of my friends go through, the Francophone and the Anglophone, it's mm -hmm. like you guys are the same country. Exactly. <laughs> you know what is what is this? You know, yo, because you speak French, you feel you're superior to somebody that doesn't speak it. Why? You know. So um, uh, also with that mentality, you look at the Pan African movement. You look at people like uh, Julius Nyerere mm. uh, of Tanzania. You look at Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, I mean, uh, Kenyatta of Kenya. Mm. It, so, Namdi Azikiwe. So, the, I, I I grew up also idolizing uh, those um, uh, type of uh, leaders. Uh, mm. Patrick uh, Lumumba of Congo. It, it, it's it, it, you you know you you see the effort they were trying to make. Mm. in bringing Africans 
together. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The, the, the continent has really suffered um, in, in the divide and conquer um, psychological uh, trauma, mm-hmm. you know. So it, it, it's going to take a lot of uh, effort to um, bridge that gap. Yeah. So we, we, we have a lot of work to do. So, you know, even some of our most educated cannot oh, yes. see beyond their own tribes. Yes, yes. You know, so uh, it's a big, it's a big, you know, disease. Yeah, you yeah know, it's a fallacy to think that uh, formal education erases. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, so uh, that that's also part of the effort that, you know, I'm trying to make in, uh, in you know, my style of filmmaking and mm-hmm. just the way I'm approaching and reaching out to everybody in the in the industry, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah. Uh, That's I'm, great. Um, and I'm sure there, there might be some filmmakers who would watch this and say, hey, how do I get my film in? And, and I just want to bring into the conversation the fact that you founded the African Film Festival, TAF. Yes. And through that, people can showcase their work, you know, Talk, talk to us about TAF. It happens in uh, Texas. Yes. Dallas, or are you Texas. doing it all over the world? Uh, TAF happens in Dallas, Texas every June, uh, first week of June. It used to be an um, uh, independent weekend type of uh, festival, but uh, it was competing with a lot of holidays and events. So we moved it down to the first week of June. Okay. Um, so this year, for example, is from June 1st to, to June 3rd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so TAF really came about, um, as you know, uh, we touched on earlier about uh, Lost and Abroad, the premieres and, yes. and, and things. Madison was one out of 10 cities that I was premiering each time that I released the film. When I released uh, False Engagement, the same yes. thing. When I released African Time, the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, when I released The Other Tribes, the same thing. So I was going to these different cities until I, it became very capital intensive and exhausting. Mm-hmm. You know, because I was releasing a film each year uh, at that mm-hmm. time. And, uh, the type of success that I had with from Lost and Abroad, uh, both at that time DVD sales and all these schools um, buying into the story mm-hmm. uh, till till today using it, mm-hmm. um, I thought, uh, how can I now open, uh, you know, this opportunity to other. African filmmakers. Yeah. And uh, I say, okay, instead of going from city to city for these premieres, I would just open up a festival to premiere my films and theirs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, so the funny thing is, since it's eight years now, I mean, uh, uh, I've been spending more time promoting other people's other people. films than, 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 than mine. That's also. the big heart. That's the big heart that you talked yeah, about. So, big um, because, because of the TAF Awards uh, ceremony, which is very big mm-hmm. in, in, the, in, in the African film industry as in general, mm-hmm. um, the, the TAF Trophy, we dubbed it as the the World Cup of African Films. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and, you know, p- people like uh, Angela Bassett's story, Remand, uh, that she told about Uganda's judiciary system have come across uh, TAF. Mm. Uh, we've had uh, films uh, from South Africa, Cameroon, mm-hmm. Uganda, just from... Every year we have film from some African country that, that actually represents that country mm-hmm. at the um, uh, best international uh, foreign language film category at the Oscars. So we've been able to attract uh, big films and, and big names to, to the African Film Festival. You know, so um, it's the, the eight, this is our eighth year 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, going on in June every year, and and with time, the uh, festival also now produce two more festivals. Uh, as you know, we have African Women Arts and Film Festival that mm-hmm. that that's dedicated to African women. Huh. Um, yeah, our fest is dedicated mm-hmm. to African women filmmakers and mm-hmm. artists. Uh, just to encourage them, the challenges that they face in the industry. Yeah. Uh, once I got into it and noticed some of the things that they go through, mm. uh, I wanted to take that extra step to create a festival to appreciate just their work. Uh, uh, so that's, that goes on in March of every year, uh, you know, to also... Uh, commemorate the International Women's Month. Ah, which yes. Is March. Okay. Yeah. So this past um, Our Fest was held in Zambia. And, mm-hmm. and the uniqueness of the festival, it goes, I, I, I hold it in a different country every year. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Our Fest. Then uh, TAF also gave birth to Villa Fest, Village Arts and Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And that's is held every December in Nigeria, okay. uh, in Owere, where, where I'm from. Okay. And that's, you know, that gears towards the African indigenous films. Okay. And African indigenous arts. Wow. So that's why I call it village arts. Village arts. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you're doing more than I know, my word. Yeah. So... Yeah, well, dealing with three festivals uh, so far, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been able to assemble a good team that are very supportive in helping run these things. It's great. Uh, yeah, it's wow, a lot of work. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I heard in one of your interviews you talked about initially one of the the reasons why you also went into film was to um, tell the African stories for. The, the the other world the outside world mm. um and personally i'm passionate about um us consuming our own goods and i am curious what your experience has been i think some industries have really been pushing like nollywood has really been pushing for us to consume our own stuff uh, but i'm just curious from your perspective as a filmmaker how is that going how's the effort to ensure that africans are consuming their own media and um uh, productions um i think it's good so far um i think it's good it can be better we are working for it to be better uh we want to take pride in our work we want Mm -hmm. to take pride in our stories we want to take pride in our platforms Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because it's very important uh because uh, truly it's it's really with interviews like this hopefully it gets across to a lot of people uh it, it's a matter of uh, raising that uh, awareness and consciousness mm. that africans we don't own anything mm. we are consumers we consume mm. so and, uh, and and being consumers in our own stories um what what we watch or what we uh, see about ourselves Mm -hmm. are now influenced by what others want the world to see about us or about ourselves Mm -hmm. so but if we have our own you know um channels and streaming services Mm -hmm. like root flicks created and owned by africans Mm -hmm. um we can we cannot be biased about the truthfulness of what the story we are trying to tell. Mm. You know, um, we will not be controlled uh, uh, per se. Mm-hmm. So, and it's a matter of time before a lot of people catch on to such platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, the, the challenges we face in the industry is when it seems like we are running out of stories mm. and, and when it's when consumers feel like they are watching the same things over and over <laughs> again yes. then they gradually start 
you know, backpedaling and, yeah. and, and seem like they are losing uh, uh, focus or attention to uh, our platforms or our stories. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we are working on to regain their confidence mm -hmm. uh, because we have a lot of stories to sugarcoat a, 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 any production. We, we really have a lot of original stories to tell. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and that's what they want to see, I, I must say. Uh, so uh, we are working on that towards that on Root Flix so that people don't want to see the same stories over and yes. over again. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the basic uh, truth. Now, apart from that fact, in their defense, mm -hmm. um, we also have to... Uh, we also have to point out the fact that the same divide and conquer mentality that we, we have to keep hammering on that awareness mm -hmm. uh, whereby um, we, need, we, we need to encourage ourselves, we need to encourage Africans that it's okay to, to uh, have an African name. For, you know, so it's it's um you are a father a husband and you are running three festivals in addition to a full-time job how do you make it happen great question time you know if um where there's a will there's a way that you 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 get to find out um you know it it, it takes a lot of discipline mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of uh, scheduling it mm -hmm. takes good time management skills uh, to know that okay in the morning you're getting the kids ready to school you drop them off uh, you go to your own work you come back you pick them up you know uh, uh, so you you have to pace yourself um, mm -hmm. uh, you know you get to lose some of the uh, luxury of social time Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you are pressing to achieve some of these things, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, commitment, mm -hmm. especially the, when there's no influx of money uh, coming out of out, out of these, yes. you know. So um, it's really a matter of um, that having that will, mm -hmm. you know, to to do it. Mm -hmm. And impossible is nothing. Anybody can actually do it if you set out the time. And, and it's, not, it's not always as easy as maybe as I make it look. Yes. A lot of times I don't want to get up, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. but uh, in the end, I still, I still get up anyway to say, mm. okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So time yeah. management is a big thing. It's a big um, thing. And uh, I lied. I have two more questions. The other one is, um, how do you take care of yourself to be well when you have so much going on? And I ask this as someone who is very busy and there are moments where I say, okay, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of my mental health and my physical health so that I can, how do you do that? Bigo B, Kele <laughs> Chiike. <laughs> well, um, soccer. Soccer, football. football. So, uh, you know, growing up playing the game, uh, it becomes a part of you, mm -hmm. no matter how old, you know. Mm -hmm. So that little having passion for the game and then uh, playing at any opportunity that I get mm -hmm. uh, still gives me that um, workout. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it gives me that cardio and exercise that I that I need since I you know I used to be a gym freak but uh, wow. not anymore I don't have the time anymore okay. uh, uh, if you remember I, I I competed in the a bodybuilding uh, yes yes Mr. Wisconsin back in the day <laughs> so I don't have the time to be going to the gym as I used to so a uh, little soccer here and there helps me uh, keep fit Okay, I can hear. I can. I can see. It's a big joy. This is the biggest smile you've given me. All ah. <laughs> you, like you're yeah. smiling so I brightly. I don't want us to get into soccer discussion. <laughs> I, 
we'll get into it. And my last question is how can people keep up with you? Where should they follow you and keep up with your work? Um, well, my Facebook and Instagram and Twitter handles are at Kelechi AK Film. Okay. Um, that, so that's really the, the best way to uh, see what I'm doing and follow what I'm doing at Kelechi AK Film. And that's mm -hmm. the same handle for all of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Kelechi. I'm so grateful for your time. I know you're very busy with so many things. Um, I don't take it for granted that you gave me this time. I'm very excited for our audience and listeners um, to hear this story and follow the work and support you and other people that you are supporting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Linda Akunta. Flip the music.